This is a cover-up murder case of Ted R. Schmidt. Today we're going to be discussing about a very, very critical information. And this information is coming from Dr. Ed Ferguson, who was over the victim advocate's report, which he had made at the crime scene, which was not needed or, you know, mandatory by law to make this report. And he took it out of his own initiative to make this report. Now, I got to say something. Excuse me. Dr. Ed Ferguson is a five star victim advocate doctor. And his office is still open today with those strong five stars. In Naples, Florida. Um, prior to contacting Dr. Ed Ferguson over the victim's advocate report that's shown here, he stated that he did make a report of the event, although it was not required by the law, but he did do so because of the unusual events that was occurred at the call. Um, he also stated that he turned the report on September 6th of 1999 to Sheriff's Officer Sergeant Bill Rule, who was also phoned during this time to ask where the victim's advocate report was. And Sergeant Rule said that he had taken the report to the records department of the sheriff's office, which the records department was also contacted and a lady was um, who answered the phone went by the name of Donna, did not find any kind of report at all. Thus, you know, clearly showing that Mr. Sergeant Bill Rule here didn't even bother to take the victim avid's record, report to the sheriff's department to be filed. He just decided to take it and dispose of it himself. Thus, it was lost. Do you want anything to put in? Yeah, because when we contacted the sheriff's department, they said they did get the report, but they didn't know where it was. This is what we deal with. Now, leading on to this statement, this Donna also told um, who had ever contacted her at the time to contact the state attorney's office. Now, this was also contacted, um, was trying to be contacted from the state attorney's office from January 3rd of 2000, who never gave a call back or, you know, decided to leave any kind of contact to any of the family. Right. They just left them with blank. Now, reading on further of this, Dr. Fer Ferguson also stated over the phone when he arrived on the scene that it was extremely dark. It was so dark that everybody that was at the scene was using flashlights and Dr. Ferguson himself had to walk back to the car, his own car, to get a flashlight in order to see what he was even doing. And it is stated right here in this paper, highlighted. And I'm not going to lie, I'm pretty, I'm pretty angry to even see this because it's ridiculous. Um, yeah, because they claimed they could see out the living room window, mm -hmm. but it was so dark that they all had flashlights. Yep. And Dr. Ferguson even hunted down pretty much, tried to contact Tammy Smelser, who was apparently disgruntled and was constantly screaming, what did they do to him? Talking about Ted. And this was after about 10.55 p.m. after the stabbing, which the stabbing was about 8.45 p.m. to 9 p.m., but the officers never established a firm time of death. Um, after apparently calming Miss Seltzer down, she had stated to Dr. Ferguson, which he felt led to believe by the others present that stabbing event happened in the yard, which was totally different to all the statements. And please keep that in mind, that primary statement already taken from all that was involved, including Miss Smelser, which definitely did not agree with the statements given to Dr. Fer Ferguson by Smelser. Correct. And then Dr. Ferguson stated that he went to many of this types of situations in this case, felt an unusual amount of people was present at the crime scene. Dr. An, immu 
unusual, unusual amount of people. Really? Six sergeant detectives? Let's think about that. And let's not forget, Dr. Ferguson also throwed in there that everybody that was at the scene knew each other. That include all the sheriffs, all the EMSs, everybody that was including of the Otis McMillan, McMullen, Tammy Smelser, Gene Rhodes, yeah. and everybody that was involved except for Ted Schmidt were yeah. all related. Yes. That's kind of funny to me. And How Travis Goff that we keep mentioning, he also, at some point, was, was a sheriff. Who was a former, was a formal, former, former sheriff yes. of the Collier County Sheriff's Department, which is also shown in the report right here in my hand on the first page. But and, we'll be getting that to another I time. And I want to show you something else, which I'm not getting into. But Florida State, all these people have seen my son's case. And it, nothing is done. No. Nothing. Nothing. Naples, Florida, the Everglades, Copeland, Immokalee, none of it. And you know what's even worse about this whole scenario? Is that the fact the only flipping person that actually gave a crap about the case was Dr. Ferguson. Dr. Ed Ferguson. And we will be reaching out to Dr. Ed Ferguson for further investigation on this report. Yes. Because it is no longer in the law's hands. It is in our hands. God bless. God bless.